Ladies and gentlemen, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'll begin with a script for remotely conducted hybrid open meetings. We are using Zoom for this meeting, which allows the public to participate in the meeting as an attendee. Chair can request that members of the public provide their names for purposes of keeping accurate minutes of the meeting. Attendees must register to participate. The registration link is unique to, to the meeting. The registration link can be found in the description of the Nantucket Government TV YouTube live feed for the meeting. Attendees will join in listening mode. They can click the raise hand button if they wish to speak. The chair will call on those who will raise their hands in the order they were raised. All questions should be directed through the chair. Confirming member access is a preliminary matter. I am Andrew Lowell, the chairman of uh, Harbor Shellfish Advisory Board. Permit me to confirm, confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and hear me. Members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. We have uh, Mr. Grace. Here. Mr. Bossy. Here. Uh, Mr. Anderson. Here. Mr. Andrews. Here. Thank you. We have Mr. Franzuto. Here. Thank you, Dave. Uh, staff, we have Tara. Yeah. Thank you, Tara. Anticipated speakers on the agenda, please respond in the affirmative. Do we have any anticipated speakers tonight? I don't know. Not unless uh, Kona's going to break ranks and say something. Good evening, Kona. Good morning. Good, good evening. This open meeting of the Harbor Shellfish Advisory Board is being conducted remotely pursuant to Chapter 2 of the Acts of 2023. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will feature public comment. For this meeting, the Harbor Shellfish Advisory Board is convening by video conference via Zoom app as posted on the town's website identifying how the public may join. Please note this meeting is being recorded and all attendees are participating by video conference or here in person. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you. Take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. All supporting materials that have been provided members of this body are available on the town's website unless otherwise noted. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda unless the chair notes otherwise. Meeting business ground rules. We're now turning to the first item on the, the agenda. Before we do so, permit me to cover some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of our business and to ensure accurate me meeting minutes. The chair will introduce each speaker on the agenda. After they conclude their remarks, the chair will go down the line of members, inviting each by name to provide any comment, questions, or motions. Please hold until your name is called. Please remember to mute your phone or computer when you are not speaking. Remember to speak clearly and in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. For any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you and state your name before speaking. If members wish to engage in a conversation with other members, please do so with the chair taking care to identify yourself. After members have spoken, the chair will, will afford public comment to those members of the public that have joined the meeting. The public who wish to speak must state their name and be acknowledged by and speak through the chair. Each vote taken in this meeting will be conducted by a roll call vote. I'd like to call to order this meeting, the Harbor and Shellfish Advisory Board. Today is June 6, 2023. Can we have a uh, motion to approve tonight's agenda, please? Motion to approve by Scott Anderson. Second. Motions made by Mr. Anderson, seconded by Mr. Brace to approve tonight's agenda. All in favor, Mr. Brace. All right. Mr. Anderson. Aye. Mr. Bossy. Aye. Ms. Andrews. Mr. Franzuto. Oh. oh, sorry, I was muted. It's okay. I vote aye. Thank you. Mr. Franzuto. Aye. Chair votes aye. Uh, the chairman's report, we have the Nantucket Harbors Action Plan Update uh, Committee Public Meeting, which was uh, last night from 6 to 8 at the Nantucket Hotel. In my opinion, was very well uh, attended. And uh, I think a lot of uh, information came out. And uh, uh, my, my opinion was very successful meeting. Mr. Brace, anything you'd like to add on that? Yeah, there were about 80 people there. Was, I was curious of the attendance. And um, 
most of the, you know, most of the, uh, you know, long time gap flies on the harbor were there. Most of them behaved themselves um, mm -hmm. and offered constructive information, which was great. Mm -hmm. um, the committee had a meeting before the, um, before the event to sort of work out how things are going to go. And there were some people feeling like it might not work and people may not get a lot of people and we might get, get people engaged and then it would work the opposite. Mm -hmm. you know, you know, I saw some tables, not people not leaving the table for the whole hour, mm -hmm. right? Because yeah. they had so much to say. And, and some standing room only around, yeah. around the table. Yep. So, uh, yeah, I thought uh, it was great. Yes, yeah, me as well. So was that, was it videotaped, do you know? I'm not sure. It can be watched. If it was taped but, or not. That was something Jeff Carlson was going to try and work out. I suppose uh, what's discussed at the tables would be difficult. Uh, but it was, you know, they had, Urban Harbors had somebody at each one of the tables taking notes on laptops. Right. Um, and it all, all that becomes, that all that informs the creation of the plan. Mm -hmm. So hopefully you get the same number of people at the, I think it, it's, there's meetings in July and August, I think. Does that sound right to you, Tara? I believe it's only, well, I, I heard late summer, but yeah, I, I think, don't know. I think, Dave, you're right. I think August, and then there was another one in the fall. Okay. Okay. Uh, with department report, do we have any representation? We do not. Natural resources report. Good evening, Tara. Good evening. Okay, so on May 30th, we had pretty much all of our hatchery staff start. Um, we had interns and then our water resource specialist, Emma Morgan, started as well. Um, I'm hoping once she gets settled in, um, we can bring her maybe to the next meeting to introduce her to you all. Uh, we have a new shell recycling person as well. And... Um, so this week we start our water quality sampling. So we have our first Nantucket Harbor um, full set of samples that start on Thursday. And we also started um, testing uh, our ponds for harmful algae blooms, um, the blue green algae that we get. We, we're charged with two ponds and then there's a lot of other organizations that cover the other ponds. And then every Friday we pull all our information together and then put out an notice to the public about which ponds have blooms. So the ponds that we have, we have Sakja Pond and we have Tom Nevers Pond. Um, and they were, they didn't have any blooms last Friday. Uh, my comet um, down near the beach was the only pond to have a blue green algae bloom. <clears throat> uh, in the hatchery, we just completed an oyster run yesterday. So we set four and a half million on shell um, of oysters that will eventually end up at Jen Carberg's um, or Nantucket Conservation Foundation's reef and pulpus. But this this set of oysters is for the project that we're doing with the Boys and Girls Club. Um, it's called the Great Oysters Explorer, and they're going to learn how to raise oysters and go through the whole process. And then we're going to teach them how to snorkel in the pool and then take that out to the field where they'll learn how to collect data and then eventually put these oysters out in the water. Um, it's also going to feed a, a Girl Scout project um, that a girl is doing through uh, the land council, and she's doing a little oyster upweller tank on petrol landing that they're constructing at the high school, and it's just going to have a few of our shell bags in it, and then we also <clears throat> set around half a million oyster singles um, for her project as well. And today we had our second scallop spawn. It went very well. We had 185 million eggs. So we filled up all 13 of our tanks. Um, so we'll see what survives on Friday when we drain them down. Next week, we're going to start our diving with the land council to collect flowering eelgrass shoots so that we can collect the seeds. And those are going to go in our tanks at the hatchery so that the seeds can germinate and mature. And then we will um, plant them out with the land council or they'll plant them out with their staff um, towards towards the beginning of fall. 
We've put out two rounds of spat bags in Matticut Harbor and Nantucket Harbor, and these are used to monitor the natural spawning patterns of the scallops. Um, I think the harbor temperature coming into the hatchery yesterday was 61 degrees, but I have heard up harbor, it's like it has been as high as 67 already, which is pretty warm. Um, but the scallops were really ripe and ready to spawn today. So I imagine we had some earlier spawns. Um, we're recycling shell three days a week. We just had Oyster Fest on Sunday. There were 500 tickets sold. It was busy. Um, it was out at Cisco Brewery. It was a celebration of all of the oyster farms local here on island. Um, I think it was very well attended. We had a uh, educational table there that showed people what we were doing with oysters and how they improve water quality. But we also posted a learn how to shuck oyster table, which was even more popular. So we'll probably expand that next year. I think people wanted to shuck their own so they didn't have to wait in line. So it was kind of a good deal for them. Um, but we should have an idea maybe later this week of how much shell we were able to recycle from that event. Um, and then, yeah, I think that's it. I don't really have a lot of updates um, related to other projects and natural resources because we have been slammed in the hatchery with training and everything. So I haven't really honestly made it out of the hatchery for much. So um, if you have any questions about what we're doing right now or what we will be doing next month, feel free to ask and um, I'll try to get some additional updates if, if needed. Feeling comfortable and confident with your new hires? Yeah, I mean, this is the first year that we've had two new full-time staff, um, you know, after having people trained for several years and everything kind of turnkey. So, um, you know, there's a little bit of a transition period for all of us um, trying to get people trained. And um, so I haven't really had a chance to like, you know, be on my email and stuff like that. So we're just like knee deep in doing everything, but everyone's great. Um, we have a couple interns return that returned from last year and a few new ones. And um, yeah, there's a great energy to the hatchery this year, lots of new ideas. And um, I'm excited for, for this season. Honestly, I, uh, I don't know about the rest of the board, but you, you can actually feel the energy. So it's exciting. <laughs> uh, thank you. Um, can you clarify for me and uh, for some others that were asking after the meeting last night, what is Vince Murphy's new title and who took his place uh, in his previous position? So I think Vince Murphy's new title is Coastal Resiliency Manager. Murphy. Okay or director. It's either manager or director. I thought it was no, I thought it was sustainability, right? Oh. Um sustainability because he oversees energy now, right? And also um, um yeah, I think I think you're right. <laughs> Sorry. All right. I'm, I'm fried and frazzled, but I think you're right. Sustainability ma manager sounds correct. Um, and the person that took his place is Leah Hill. She used to be the assistant biologist at the hatchery, and she is the coastal resiliency coordinator, which was Vince's old position. Okay, thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Board members, questions, comments for Dara, natural resources. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Franzuro. Yeah, I think uh, last night went great. And uh, thanks, Tara, you're doing a great job. I know uh, you got a lot going on this time of year. <laughs> yes. Anybody else? Do we have any public comment on green or natural resources? We'll move into old business. Thank you, Tara. You're welcome. Uh, Thank you. Fox explanation and purpose. Bossy has uh, put it together for us once again, and uh, I've read it. Uh, I, I really like it, especially starting with a question. When it rains, does the water on your property stay on your property or run off to one of our harbors or ponds? Um, it, it, it's, it couldn't be better. I, I really like it, Dave. Thank you. 
board members. Anything? I think it's a beautiful I, job. I, oh, sorry. That's okay. Thank you, Ginger. No, I, I think it's great and uh, we need to get it to finance so they can get it to the printers. So, so Elise has it. She uh, she requested it the other day. I think through you, Dave. Um, and I sent her a copy and she asked if we would just sit, let let her know as soon as we approve it, as soon as this group's approved that copy. That, 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 that's what I was hoping we could either take a vote or whatever, but I think it's great. I think it's been through enough editing and I'd like to get it as trying to get, I think they needed it today, but we'll, we'll get it to them first thing or she has, she has the current one that we got, right? Yeah, correct. Right, so I'm just, I'm just going to email her and tell her the board. Well, I'm hoping the board will approve it right now and then we'll, we'll get it to the printers tomorrow. Well, we, through you, Mr. Chairman, didn't we, I mean, I just did the minutes, but um, you know, we, and I didn't send them to you guys, I don't think, <laughs> but um, at the last meeting, we, we approved our slip with revisions that Dave would make based on what we said at the meeting. So that's, that's good enough for me. The only difference is we had uh, Libby's comments, her final comments were incorporated in this Right. We can always take another vote. Yeah, yeah, I'd make a motion that we approve the current version. Second. I'll second that. Oh, okay. All right, motion's made by Mr. Anderson. Is that Mr. Franzuto with the second? So we're, it's just one all question, right. we're all good with the date. September 9th, Saturday, 9.30. That's, I think that's where we ended up. I think yeah, that's as long as it's not Labor Day weekend. Right? Yeah. No, I don't think it is. No. If you push it out, you also get into some of the Jewish holiday potentially. Mm -hmm. uh, Labor Day is fourth. So okay. you can there for Labor Day. Right. Okay. Uh, so the motion has been made by Mr. Anderson, seconded by Mr. Franzudo to approve uh, uh, the draft of uh, the buck slip. By Mr. Bossy. Any more discussion on the motion? All in favor, Mr. Anderson? Aye. Mr. Brace? Aye. Mr. Bossy? Aye. Ms. Andrews? Aye. Mr. Franzuto? Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Thank you again. Do we have any? Uh, so going from here, uh, uh, who's Pushing the copies along. Dave, do you want to do you want to contact the lease, or do you want me to? I'm sorry. You want to call? So we have to contact uh, Elise. To see. I, I certainly can. You do that. Okay. Good. Sure. We Thanks. are. Are we still um, hoping, or have we heard back, or anything from the Civic League folks that they're going to st start? Um, I emailed them, Dave, I, and, and said, what do you guys think of the, either the 9th or the 16th of September? I have not heard back from Peter Morrison, and that was like 10 days ago. Okay. Well, I just think they're a good avenue, and because they're they're about to kick off all of their neighborhood meetings, so Which is, I'd, I'd like it to be a perpetual thing on their agenda. I'll, I'll email them again, but I'm sure you're right. You know, they're getting ready for their president's breakfast in June, and I'm sure those guys are busy. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. I'll email them again. Well, that's a good idea, Dave. If uh, if they print out a an agenda schedule of all their meetings for the year and and uh, uh, we're on there for this, that that's a good thing. So, good idea, Dave. Should and, should we? Do we have the bucks that we've agreed of what it is now? But now we're now we're all about, you know, um, social media and the press release and all that. So, so are we going to are we going to generate, um, um, as we said in the minutes at the last meeting, catchy phrases or whatever we're going to use to promote this going forward? And I mean, I think that's something we would want to hand to specifically. Mm -hmm. 
um, or do we want to print up copies of the buck slip and hand it out at the Civic League if they didn't already get it in there? I mean, they're not going to get it until August 1, so. Um. I, Mr. Chairman, I, I think that would be great if, if um, I, I'll see if Jeff, um, Jeff can print us up, uh, print us up some. Uh, they can they can print you know several to a page and then they can you know uh, Civic League or us can cut them and hand them out. I think the more the more we have it out there, the better it's going to be. Most so, definitely. Absolutely, I agree. Um, and and. How about at the actual meeting, what we will be displaying? Um, you know, we might even ask them if if uh, we can attend their president's breakfast, and we just tell them what it is. Yeah, you know. Could you um, could you possibly include that in your email? We'd, yeah. we'd like an invite to, for some of our members to participate. Just make a present, you know. Five minute presentation. Oh. Anything else? At some point, we're going to need to come up with an agenda. Um, mm -hmm. Dave, you had um, you had sent me a, a presentation by Emily Mullen that she had put together. So that parts of which would be great to use for this. So. I want to go back and look at it and see if we want to peel some of it out or ask her for support or maybe she wants to come present a little shortened version of her talk. Uh, but we should come up with some, some kind of agenda like that. I agree. Um, and just as a reminder, uh, later in the meeting, we'll be discussing our, our summer schedule. And uh, if we continue the way history has and have one meeting July, one meeting August. That means after this meeting, they'll will only have four meetings un until this presentation. Right. So um, let's try to be uh, as well prepared as possible. See, we can put that on the agenda you know, on next meeting's agenda to actually discuss an agenda for this presentation. Mm -hmm. And if, if anybody's uh, willing to draft out, uh, uh, you know, a schedule of events and and what we can possibly show, anything colorful on an easel, uh, something like that. I'm not sure if there's something from uh, Natural Resources Department that could be pinned up or or uh, uh, you know to attract attention. I have a big screen. I think they do. Okay. I can stop over there and check. Okay, you can, that'd be great. Yeah, you can start, and then I can give you my ideas for the you know, ideas I've been having about what we present and talk. Start to get something put together. Do you have something else you want to add, Scott? You know, again, I've been down, when you go down to the town hall, there's a lot of good glossy material mm -hmm. hanging around. I've been going down to see if we can and get some of it and hand yeah. out to people. Sure. Two. That's so a great idea. There's at least two or three things. There's yeah. one on the fertilizer. There's also the stuff that, like, the dump put out. And mm -hmm. so, what goes to the dump probably should be noted as well. And the hazardous waste pickups. The different things so we can inform people about yeah. hazardous waste. That's what we're talking about, right? Yep. Yep. I, I mean, I can start fleshing out an agenda. I mean, I, I think that we ought to dedicate because we're going to be short on meetings. I think we ought to dedicate an, an, a, a portion of the next meeting and, and really uh, just nail this down. We, we've come so far uh, relatively quickly. I think we 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 just got to uh, you know just put the put the finer points on it and then get obviously we'll get the word out. Um, I mean natural I. Tara, do you guys have social media pages and stuff? Of course, we have social media. We use Instagram and Facebook. Um, we have a, you know, the town website. Yeah, I mean, if if because 
I, I don't have access to that stuff, but maybe you guys could also do do it on there. Yeah, we're happy to to push anything that that's needed. That'd be great. Thanks. Mm -hmm. I'm sending her uh, her an email right now to, to that we approved it and uh, we're you know she needs to get it to the printers. Good. That's good. Good start. Board members, Buck Smith, explanation and purpose. Any more discussion? So we'll have that on the, the discussion the agenda for that meeting at the next meeting on your business. Okay. Peter, we will uh, just uh, retitle that to include yeah. creating agenda. Yeah. Nope. Moving forward, there's no more discussion. Uh, vineyard wind, south coast wind. I have a question about you. You want to keep that on to say the fact that the appeal was denied? Or... Right. Um, Unless uh, new you know, it can out. always be brought up again. Certainly, yeah. we can, uh, you yeah. um, know. It could be under a general heading since there are other wind projects, right? Construction has begun. Right. Uh, it's kind of like wait and see. The first strike has been settled. Right. You won't see any of the smoke. Yeah. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> yeah, isn't the first first one's been put in, right? Yes. Yeah. The closest, the closest one's one. 15 miles away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it'll be showing up. I'd be curious to see. Remember when the when the uh I'd be curious to see if you can see it. I remember when the Cape Wind had that observation tower. Mm -hmm. in Nantucket Sound, and it was at the height of what the wind turbine would be, so people would get a sense of it. And you're going across the, the sound in a boat, in a ferry boat, you're hard pressed to see that thing even on a clear day. So, and it was closer than 15 miles. And I'm just, I don't know. Well, like I said, we'll just, we can always agree we wait and see now. Yeah. Um, and so, you know what's, what's happening is, well, I see it on social media. People are, they're seeing lights at night on the horizon and thinking that those are wind turbines or wind turbine installation crews when they're actually fishing boats. They're there this time of year. It shows people are paying attention. Yeah. But are they understanding no, what they're actually maybe seeing? Maybe not, but. Uh, unfortunately, I think a lot of conclusions uh, are jumped to uh, ahead of time. Um, based on how many people think the turbines are already installed? So uh, it's anyhow. Uh, it, I think it's wise for everybody to simply stay uh, stay in tune to what's going on. It was actually something out on social media today about how biomass might increase after a couple of years out there mm -hmm. and we actually creating more safe place for the whales mm -hmm. and everything else to congregate. Right. So okay. again, and that was by some other scientists. Yes, I saw that as well. It, they <laughs> actually create habitat. Yeah. For some species. I will tell. Mr. Franzuto. Yeah, um, I'm sorry. I. After I opened my big mouth um, about talking about this on our next agenda, if our next meeting is on the 20th, I, I'm off island that day for, for, uh, for an appointment with my son. I apologize. Dave. So I, I, I spoke I spoke too too soon before I looked at the calendar. Well, apology not necessary, Dave. Uh, you can always email any ideas uh, to the secretary, and and uh, uh, you know you can still participate. And and we urge well, you to do so. I'll 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 still build the agenda, but while we're on that topic, our our next meeting after that would be July eleventh. Is that correct? Uh, historically, we've chosen the first Tuesday of August for Tuesday of July, I imagine. Uh, uh, would be July 4th. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, wow. 
Uh, and how would the 11th conflict with this rule? Because that would not be the first Tuesday, that would be the second Tuesday. Well, we just have it on the 18th then. Okay. Yep. You're not okay. gonna be here on the 11th anyway. All right. Okay. Well, the good the, the good news is, is we're talking about September. So right. I, I think if we, if we start banging on an agenda and everybody weighs in on the 20th, uh, with your their ideas, uh, you know, back to me, and we stun up the uh, the uh, Civic League and Tara's uh, input to the social media. I think we'll we'll be well on our way. Uh, we'll be well on our way, but I mean, um, but there's nothing stopping us if we need to have another meeting. We feel like we have work to get done. This is sure. We just Certainly. find out from Erica if there's space, and then we we do it. Mm -hmm. Right, there was, right. There was at one time when we needed to have another meeting on something, and there was no space, so she got a space over at the water company, and they have a conference room over there. So I'm sure that if we okay, need, yeah. All right, so it's it, it's not we shouldn't not feel unusual. Right, we shouldn't feel hard pressed because we only have a set number of meetings. Okay. Yeah, I, I. Yeah. Okay, so to be clear, Dave, you're going to work on ideas and just test them around so we have them. Yep, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll, I'll get you an agenda, uh, before the end of the, this week, and then, uh, and I'll talk to Jeff about how we can get, you know, fifty, color. Copies of four buck slips. On a on a page that we can uh, we can use for handouts, uh, put up on the bulletin boards at the town building, that sort of thing, um, and get to the civic league. So, yeah, yeah, we'll 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 work through that. I, I just a thought. We might ask Elise if she could print up two hundred extra and charge Jeff. You know, see Jeff approves <laughs> it. She's getting it printed anyway. It's the town. That's, that's that's a that's a great idea. I just don't know that their printer is going to be quick enough for us for okay. what we're for what we're trying to do. Okay. But you know, if Jeff can if Jeff can run them run them through the copy machine uh, and and get them to us, then we can start getting them getting them out there right away. Sounds like a job for one of those new interns. I don't think I don't think you're going to need 200 copies for the president's breakfast. It's not that many people. It's just a, it's one president for each of the whatever yeah, is at 23. Oh, 23. Okay, so so maybe we get Jeff to print us 10. So that that would be that would be 40 that right. we would have have to be to distribute. That that's you're you're probably right, Peter. That's probably plenty. I've been to those breakfast foods really good, but there aren't that aren't as many people as you might think. Okay, all right. Well, we'll we'll shoot for 40 then. Thank you. That's you know, great. I can I can just ask Peter Morrison how many people, and then then tell you. Okay, great. Okay, so we backed up on the buck slip from Vineyard Wind, South Coast Wind. Anything uh, more to discuss on either one of those? We can always back up again if we need to. Move forward. Anything new on Green Crabs? I did an office social media. It looks like whoever was out fishing was coming in with some good uh, pull traps. Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. good. If anything, I think we're going to have to figure out how we encourage people to get more people out there doing it. Yeah. Fishing. Which was actually discussed uh, at our table last night. Uh, Tara was at the table and Samantha Dinette from the NSA. Uh, so there was a, a decent amount of discussion on somehow expanding uh, the catch. I, I'm curious, if somebody was asking me uh, uh, on average, how many are in one trap? Um, when, when I was doing the research, they were saying that they would get at least 70 in a 24 hour period mm -hmm. in the traps where they were you know, picking mm -hmm. them up mm -hmm. day after day. That, okay. And that looked pretty full. Yes. So there was uh, actually, uh, I think green traps were spoken about 
at a couple of tables last night. Um, and we can talk about that more in our next topic. If there's nothing else here, we'll move forward to the Harbor Action Plan Committee and Shab's recommendations. Um, the, the the discussion points last night, uh, you know, a lot of people were concerned about access. Uh, you know, there was a discussion about, uh, you know, another boat ramp, of course, which, uh, you know, Mr. Franzuto has gone over half of his life searching for a place when I first got on board here eight years ago or so. Uh, uh, it was also a, like a pet of mine that did a lot of driving around searching for a property where another ramp could be. Well, we, Mr. Chairman? Yes. We, we talked about that at great length and uh, basically the topic that we've come up with under the boating and navigation, which obviously needs a lot more input, but um, we uh, we're talking about um, the top the topic that the topic heading is critical infrastructure improvements, and the critical infrastructure improvements that we talked about were a um, a second offloading point for the steamship. Um, if you had a, a catastrophic failure at the steamship dock, um, you, you're not going to be able to, and, and I'm not going to go through my speech, but you're not going to be able to get fuel and, and groceries. Um, so we, under, under critical infrastructure improvements, years ago, we'd come up with an idea to build a fixed pier um, on the inside of the West Jetty that would be used for the steamship or the High Line to offload passengers and, and emergency for fuel, uh, grocery trucks and that sort of thing. And incorporated in that, uh, to the south of that would be an additional boat ramp. And the logic it was that we put forward is um, you've got that enormous parking lot at Jetty's Beach that could be used for staging of trucks. You have an enormous parking lot there that could be used for trucks and trailers and for boats. You've got the tennis courts, which are in a constant state of flux. Nobody, nobody wants to support them. Nobody wants to repair them. Nobody wants to uh, say yes or no that we're going to continue to have them and now they they do have some at the school but um, I just want the board to understand that where I'm talking about and why it would be important and how it would be a multi faceted use um, you know permitting and and construction and that sort of thing obviously would be difficult, but uh, it's got so many, that location has so many benefits. And then the second part of the critical infrastructure was the improvements at the High Line as they relate to Harbor Place or Wilkes Square or whatever that that property is um, uh, gonna do moving forward. And the fact that there have been no and we've all dropped people off at the boat. We've all dropped pick people up at the High Line. It's in, it's basically impossible. And uh, so again, critical infrastructure improvements as part of the Harbor Plan would, I believe, and and Jack Wigan agreed with me, and he actually thought that this this should be one of the spear points of the Harbor Plan uh, because. It not only, the byproduct is, is it not only affects the people who use the harbor, but it affects the entire island. And if the harbor plan can be the spear point on initiatives like this, I think this is a, this is a, a, a good ball for us to be, to be running. Mr. Chairman? Uh, yes, Ginger. 
Yeah, I, I, I'm so glad to hear about this, Dave. I think it's a, a great idea. I just was curious why inside the West Jetty and not on the, on the other side. The weather, the weather would just make it impossible for you to do ah. anything over there. If you're in the, if you're on the inside there, if you, if you looked at it and, and after the meeting last night or not, well, not after the meeting last night today, I went over there and uh, walked that property. And, and oh, by the way, that the town owns the property. Uh, so, so you know, again, that's a that's a plus. Um, so, if if you're looking at, at the jetty and you're looking at where in relative uh, location to where community sailing is, uh, the other thing that you could be tied in and would be tied in for critical infrastructure would be um, it's adjacent, it's relative um, adjacent to the federal navigation channel. And so therefore, I think you could get buy-in from people like the core uh, for the idea, number one, uh, for the location, and then adjacent to the channel, it could possibly in the future be included in the federal uh, schedule of dredging of Nantucket Channel because of its closeness to that. So mm -hmm. it, it, it's, got some, it's got some benefits that a piece of, quote, private or even public property in town Every place you look at would need major major dredging south of the shipyard mm -hmm. or uh, south of Great Arbor Yacht Club, whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, over on Montemoy Shore or the other locations, Francis Street, which we've beat to death. But my point there mm -hmm. is, is those are all going to have to be dredged, um, and all of them have impact on eelgrass, where. Uh, this other location, um, you know, might might be suitable to to do a lot of things uh, under the under the heading of critical infrastructure, because and my last final statement is Nantucket is designated. And I think you've heard me say this before. That Nantucket is designated as a subsistence harbor, which under the federal guidelines requires that greater than 85% of the goods and services come down a federal navigation channel. You know, we're not gonna fly fuel in here. We're not gonna fly bread and groceries in here. You might in an emergency, but you know, a, a very high percentage of our, our subsistence comes down that channel. So I think this is an idea that uh, I, I'd like for you guys to get behind uh, and I think it, it's some it's something v valuable uh, to be spearheaded by this harbor plan. Dave, this is like a bombshell of an idea. Uh, I never thought of that area. My question on that area, uh, when you say critical infrastructure, I'm thinking critical infrastructure is often used during, you know, whether it be a disaster or whether it be, uh, 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 you know, the, the, the steamship pier uh, inoperable. Uh, the only thing that I think about at this area that you've just mentioned is, is uh, the entire offloading area not really being able to visualize how you get across the beach, whether it's mats or whether a permanent paved road gets put down of some sort yeah, you'd, you'd, you'd have a paved you'd have a paved road yeah okay and and uh, uh, during critical storms that whole area is underwater but that whole area is also going to be raised up mm -hmm. it, so, it, so, it, okay it, so the thought process there's, is, it, there's a majority of that area just like and and the a, a way, and, and I'm not saying, Andy, that this isn't fraught with all kinds of 
permitting and engineering issues. But if you're going to go to, and the, the town is planning on, if you're going to the level of raising the entire steamship authority parking lot and terminal and easy street up out of the flood plain, then this dovetails with that just, just as well. But think again, and, and maybe this is six years of working in emergency management, but think about one of those mega yachts or think about one of the grain, uh, I'm sorry, gravel barges um, sinking in front of that terminal and blocking one of those slips, it, we're, we're all going to be cold and hungry. And I, I just think that it, you, I think it, this is really, I mean, you're, you're really looking way out of the, way out of the, uh, the box and the timeline here. But again, if you look at the coastal resiliency plan and they're talking about the possibility and Peter and I've had this discussion, the possibility of building a, a eight foot high dike across, you know, from Brand Point to Montemoy or Quays to deal with sea level rise and that sort of thing. This is not that far out of the realm of possibility. Well, it's certainly a very large area. It's an extremely shallow area, and I think it's gotten shallower over some time. It would be interesting to know uh, what uh, is what thrives in that area, if anything, uh, right now. Uh, how, how much eelgrass is there? Uh, you know, what type of shellfish are are, are using the area? But uh, no, Dave. I I, I mean. Uh, Space is limited. It's hard to visualize, uh, but I imagine if it actually ever comes to being a thing, that we'd get used to it. But uh, um, well, I, th I think it would be relatively unobtrusive because it's going to be probably a solid filled pier with a with a boat ramp component to it, and you know, if we heard it once, and I'm sure you heard it at every single table last night about mooring fields and lack of access and lack of parking and, and lack of the ability for somebody to be able to even launch their boat, uh, you know, carrying capacities and numbers of boats and everything. Th this, this fills a lot of those needs. Um, you know, we already route, we already route trucks uh, when they're, when they're doing work at Easy Street or downtown, we already route trucks up through the cliff now. That's the alternative emergency route. So again, it, it yeah, there's, there's going to be a million moving parts to this, but it, it, it's, it's got, I think it's got possibility because it, you can check a lot of the boxes, uh, right? And 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 trust me, the eelgrass folks and the shellfish folks will will all have a big say in where and how and if it gets constructed. But uh, again, you're you're uh, you know I'm looking I'm looking five to ten years out, sure. which this coastal resiliency thing has forced us all to do, and. We, we're just running short on places for infrastructure. And, um, you know, the town, Nantucket, other, other, unlike a lot of other communities, is land rich, but infrastructure poor. We, we just don't have a lot of infrastructure. You know, we, we, we were going to do all of this originally in 1993 and 95, 94, 95 when we were gonna make a solid field pier at the shipyard. And we missed that opportunity by Great Arbor Yacht Club. And this is another opportunity for a fixed, uh, fixed uh, structure with a, with a breakwater 
uh, keep uh, protecting a, a, a boat ramp off of, of, of a fixed pier. Um, but anyway, it's, it's just, it's, it's an idea. And I, I think it, I think it's got the right buzzwords that it, it could be uh, it could be started and thought of and and proved yet uh, to be yes or no. Dave, you, it's you've given us something to chew on. Certainly, that's how I feel. Uh, it's uh, it's an amazing idea. Uh, so um, the the seed is planted, and and uh, I don't think you'd have difficulty. Uh, getting this board on board uh, uh, and you know but that's up to the rest of the board to decide but uh, um, I mean something needs to be done and we all know that it was spoken spoken about at the table I sat last night was fishing no fishing and and uh, access was brought up uh, lots of other things aside from fishing and shell fishing were brought up, but access was a big one and, and uh, as was dredging, but um, I was thinking more towards the small scale access and what the land bank uh, has acquired recently. Uh, a couple, several fishermen were at the table uh, sporadically and petrol landing was brought up. And of course we know petrol landing is still uh, in limbo with lawsuit, I guess. But I think uh, as time goes on, Fisherman is like hopeful, hey, this is gonna be the place where I can get Harbor Fuel to come down with their truck and fill my boat with fuel. And yeah. I, don't think it, I don't think it is. I don't think Petrol Landing is going to uh, satisfy the commercial need that that we need, and and uh, um, so, but as far you know, as I, access, yes, Dave. No, I, I and and that that was a big topic at our table also, and and again, if you de if you design it properly and you have a, a, a breakwater out in front of that thing, um, you know the the you can bring commercial charter boats in there back them up to that fixed pier, make sure that when you design it, you have a fuel spill or oil spill recovery in, in the design, which is what we had when we talked about the, the old shipyard and you do it right. And then you, 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 the commercial guys could offload there. People could get fuel there. It, there's no neighbors to bother. Uh, again, that's that's the issue. At that's the. I mean, I talked to a caretaker last night, who's a, a, who, unbeknownst to me, was one of the people in this lawsuit at Petrol Landing, and their big complaint was noise of the boats to to fuel them. Well, there's no noise at Jetty's Beach. There, I mean, there's no there's no neighbors to bother at Jetty's Beach, mm -hmm. and you you can back a fuel truck down there, and do this stuff. And you know, put some restrictions on how long they can tie up there. You know, somebody you're not gonna you're not gonna put an 80 foot dragger along this bulkhead. You know, we, we don't want that. But by the same token, if they come in there to offload their catch for four hours or whatever, we, we don't have a place for that to happen. Right. You've heard me say it a thousand times. They take the fish boxes and drag them. 780 feet down the town pier to offload yeah okay we th th this this facility if if possible and if fundable etc permittable etc could solve and help this island in many many ways and and again it would help everyone on the island not just the boating public thank you dave um, on a smaller scale and back to the land bank, it, uh, it sparked my curiosity last night. Uh, if this board could uh, be instrumental in encouraging the land bank with what uh, they may be doing with some of their upcoming properties, uh, one being 
straight across West <laughs> Road right here uh, onto the Otison property. Uh, it's possible the land bank will be taking possession of a section of the Otison property, which is their dock on the creeks and uh, a small boat launch they made of their own there, a ramp that you can actually put a trailer down and launch an 18 to a 20 foot boat. Now the access into the, the uh, creeks themselves may be too shallow. Uh, uh, it may only be a high tide type of thing, or it could be an area where we've seen, uh, you know, some issues with the kayaks, kayak racks, Montemoy, uh, Cathcart, and could this be a relief area for kayaks, kayak launching, uh, skiff, small sailboat launching? Uh, uh, I'm not sure, but what, I'm. Yes. What, one, one, one thing, I, we, 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 there's two things. One, we have the director of the land bank on the Harbor Plan Committee, number one. And number two, I had three land bank people come up to me last night and say, they're not at liberty to say yet, but they have other properties that they have acquired that they are opening up for parking and access to the water, which is something that the land bank, until they were pressured on petrol landing, were never willing to entertain before. But I think there's, there's because they're, 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 it was always under the guise, and I'm talking about 10, 15 years years. It's always under the guise that they never had or wanted any type of commercial activity. But I think they've proven that they're willing to do that now by by the in, by the uh, the example of the the farm the farmland the the gardens that they've done now. They they've gotten away from that thinking. And it was very nice to hear that last night and we there's also a plan, and I have to talk to Carlson about it. There's also a plan that I, I had put forward to put in a, a kayak launching and recovery system at the road. I can't remember the name of the road now, adjacent to the island home where that parking lot is that the land bank owns. So the, the, the land bank is a lot more, um, receptive to these ideas now. Good Mr. Enough. Chairman? Ginger, please. Uh, that's East Creek Road. And okay. uh, that building that I think now, now belongs to the land bank that's uh, directly in front of the island home, I believe has been purchased by the land bank and it already has a small, rather rickety dock there. Thank you, Ginger. <laughs> Is it that, is that, was that Patricia Loring's property? No, uh, uh, the Loring's is uh, further down. Uh, is it further down? No, it's further back. It's, uh, it's, it's, the, it's east of the Loring's property. It's between Otison's and, uh, and uh, Pat Loring. Oh, I'm so uh, I think the house was Maisie Stars. Right. Well, any, anyway, there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of good things happening now with the with the land bank's new philosophy. Good, good to hear, Dave. Thank you. And uh, you know, if something comes to mind with any board member that uh, you know, if you happen to be uh, at a land bank property that seems like uh, a suitable use uh, could be incorporated at that property, let's uh, take it up here for discussion. Uh, I feel confident with this Harbor Action Plan having uh, two members of our board there that uh, our voice can be heard. So uh, let's take advantage of that. Anything else on the Harbor Action Plan committee recommendations? There's certainly Lots more time, a lot being discussed, a lot of people involved. So uh, uh, as far as being specific about last night, if anybody else wants to chime in on what else was spoken about there. I mean, there was coastal resilience. 
tied in with dredging, tied in with shellfish beds. So I, I think a lot of uh, uh, items are being covered there, a lot of important items uh, that uh, affect and can also benefit a, a wide variety of people to, to separate out uh, uh, residential use or, or recreational use from commercial use, uh, that was a, a good thing as well. There were, seemed to be a lot of people there concerned uh, about their abilities for recreational use uh, in the future with, with uh, scalloping and shellfishing. Uh, a bit of uh, discussion about the, the shellfish closures. Um, but uh, it was very, very informative and, and well attended. So any more discussion? on this, if not, uh, the sediment transport study and dredge plan. Uh, like I said, some of this was uh, mentioned as well. Uh, and it seems like, I feel confident the, the word is out there and this will be a lot of uh, things will be discussed. Hopefully, you know, as Mr. Carlson said, we'll be able to uh, meet with the group hired and, and uh, have some discussions with them personally. I know. Anything anybody would like to add on this topic, sediment transport study and dredge plan? Uh, filling our empty seat here on the Harbor Shellfish Advisory Board, vacated by Stephen Fair. Um, I was just informed last night at the meeting by uh, a member of the Harbor Action Plan Committee, the at-large member, Steve Leinbeck, uh, told uh, me earlier prior to our last meeting, and I mentioned it here, that he may uh, submit a letter of interest to the select board. Uh, he informed me last night where the Harbor Action Plan Committee is meeting two days per month. He didn't feel he could add another two days per month uh, to his schedule at this point. Uh, but uh, so he did not submit a letter of interest. Uh, I just spoke with Jim Sherwin. He has submitted a letter of interest. He was informed it was late, but he wasn't quite sure on how to interpret uh, what that meant. He was not told he would not be considered. Uh, actually, Mr. Bossy, is there any chance uh, you could look up tomorrow night's select board agenda and see if appointments are on that agenda. I'm, I'm just wondering if uh, if any of us should call our select board and, and uh, uh, encourage them to somehow uh, get this seat filled for us. They know there's a person out there that's interested. Uh, he, 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 Mr. Chairman, I'm just guessing here, but he may be a, had been late for the submittal for a committee appointment, but that's not what we're asking. Right. We're, 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 when I wrote the letter many years ago, how it seems like a thousand years ago, to <laughs> to fill Bill Blount's seat, you know, I specifically said vacant seat. Um, so may, maybe that's the confusion. I'm I'm. I'm not sure, but maybe that's the confusion. Well, I'm maybe. hoping there's a little loophole in there for the select board, where it's uh, uh, we're not a committee that's normally appointed. So exactly, and if one of us were unable to continue to serve, we we would we the board the remaining board would do exactly what they're doing now, and that is try to find a, a someone to fill that seat. And it does, it's not tied to any committee appointment deadline or application or anything like that. It's a, it's a, I'm, I'm preaching to the choir here. I'm sorry. Yes. yes. <laughs> which, is, which is fine, Dave. I, I mean, if we were to lose another member, we also end up uh, uh, risking a chance of, of not being able to hold meetings uh, for quorum because we're still a seven person board. If there were only five people attending, we still have to have a four-person quorum. Um, uh, so it does not give too much wiggle room for folks having the flu or 
needing to be off island uh, for for personal business. So hopefully they can they can fill the seat. Um, any more discussion? Uh, we have nothing on the health of the harbors, though. I like I said before, I think most everything we talk about here is has to do with health of the harbors. I'm going to back up. Uh, uh, because I skipped the approval of the draft minutes of May 16th. And I didn't send them. Okay. All right. So into new business, Coastal Resilience Advisory Board. Do we have an update? Mr. Brace? No, we don't. Okay. Aquaculture lease program review and update. Did we keep this on here at Tara's request? Was yes. This little, okay. Tara, is there something you'd like to add on this? topic um i you know i think there was a lot of discussion about it last night um wow. and i think that if we do end up you know receiving applications for our aquaculture sites um it's something that we're going to want to do sooner than later i i'm confident it will get written into the harbor plan but i think it might be good to go ahead and start working on some of it now and just kind of reviewing reviewing what we have and and moving forward that way if that's something you guys are interested in well, i'm definitely interested in it but i think if just one one idea is maybe that's something that we could do in the fall when we go back to meeting twice a month and a full board and you know, I, I think that would, my suggestion would be that would be a good fall and winter project. Yeah, I know that there's a push. I've heard some conversations about adjusting the bushel limit and also talking about changing the um, start time for the, the scallop fishery, um, moving it to an earlier date than November 1st. My personal thought is, is that, you know, it's, you know, summertime already, and it's a little bit too late to already get something like that in place. Um, but I just wanted to let you know that people are having some of those discussions. And so I think that, you know, looking at some of these options and maybe, um, you know, coming up with the plan for 2024 might be good um, to see how we want to handle everything with the the way that the fishery has changed and transitioned and and that sort of thing. Tara, is it, uh, isn't it easier for us to uh, raise the catch limit? Uh, it, it, are we now allowed uh, by the state to have that up to 10 bushel? I mean, I think we've always been allowed to have it up to 10 bushels, but I mean, I think a lot of discussions need to happen about the size of the fishery and um, you know, whether it makes sense to raise a bushel limit in the winter or, you know, there's just a lot of different options and scenarios that we could run through and, and figure out what works best for our habitat and everything at this point in time. You know, Mr. Mr. Chairman, Dave. for a meeting that I wasn't going to talk at, um, I apologize. The, to Tara's point, and to your point for that matter, as far as changing regulations, um, you're, you're gonna you're gonna expend as much energy in the vetting process to change the bushel limit as you would to change to pick October fifteenth as a start date for commercial. So. To Tara's point, you 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 gotta you gotta you gotta discuss that and vet that based on the needs and the the the, the current state of the fishery and what may work for the fall of 23 may not work for the fall of 24. But my point is is that if you're if you're gonna if you're gonna have the, that in depth discussion and shed that blood, you might as well look at the whole thing. Because you're, whatever whatever support you're going to have to garner, garnish, and and science that you're going to have to support with, 
for either of those topics is, is going to be the same. So you, you, you ought to look at the, at the big picture and rather than, you know, just, just, just saying, okay, we're going to raise it to 10 bushel or we're going to start on October 15th. I think you, whatever effort you're going to put into any of those kinds of discussions is going to need a lot of, a lot of discussion, a lot of vetting, a lot of science, and you ought to do it, you know, do it well and do it one time and, and have the flexibility. You, you, you currently have the flexibility to change the date and the bushel limit, but that doesn't mean you want to just half, half, <laughs> I almost said half, half. You, 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 you want to do it the right way. I agree. Dave, this is why we encouraged you to run again. So thank you. Um, is there any still waiting discussion? for the tequila. Any, any more <laughs> discussion on the aquaculture lease program? Yes. Tara, do you think it's too late for us to get going on this in the fall or should we start now? I don't I don't think it's too late. You know, I I think it's gonna be a a process to to comb through everything. Um there's there's a lot of change that has happened and I don't wanna rush through it. Um and you know, last time we updated the regulations, it, it was a process too with all of the fishermen and everything and breakout groups and stuff. So um I, uh, yeah, I would, I don't think anybody's willing to work on it this time of year. I think things are just too crazy. Um, and people tend to think about things right when fishing season starts. So, you know, I think it'd be something to put in place for perhaps 2024 or to, to look at starting in the fall of 23, moving into the winter of 24. Thank you, Tara. Certainly mm -hmm. we want input from the active fishermen. I do have a question about the leases. So the leases, what we were talking before were for oyster farming. Are there other available areas that could be brought into play? If you're gonna look at this, look at the whole big picture. The leases are approved for shellfish farming, not limited to just uh, oysters. Okay. So yeah, there's multiple options there also you know, vet, sugar kelp, that sort of thing. Um, yeah, not just not just oysters. There, is well, there, there are space. That's that's the thing. That's when we yeah. were dealing with Lambrick. Right. He came in looking for space. We and there is no other space. He was yeah. trying to get that four acres from the guy that he turned his his farm over to, thinking that the selectman might not give that guy the final four acres. Um, and the reason it, the reason that he was that's the whole reason he was here is to try and find out, find out if there was space. And we were we were informed by Jeff and by Tara that, that currently there's no more space. Well, I also I mean that's just an example of the aquaculture rules right now. Like I personally think that if your lease is revoked, you are not eligible to receive another another yeah. lease. So. Yeah. You know, there are some some holes in, in the policies and procedures that need to be worked out. Thank you, Tara. Any more discussion? Aquaculture lease program review. Uh, I'd like to formally uh, thank Mr. Franzuto and Mr. Grace for running again. Uh, and retaining your here on the board. And uh, so it's simply part of the procedure annually for election of officers after uh, after an election. This is our first meeting after the election. We have a forum here. So, uh, Mr. Like Chairman. Appreciate the election of officers, Mr. Franzuto. Ginger, is there any way you can mute your phone? Oh, sorry. Thanks, Ginger. Just a little background noise there, I guess. I'd like to propose a slate. I'd like to propose Mr. Lowell as chairman, Scott Anson as vice chairman, and Peter Bray as secretary, if you're all willing to maintain that position. Sure. Yes. Yes. So uh, I'm looking for a second for that motion. 
Second. Uh, Mr. Bossy has motions uh, to uh, keep all officers as they are, being myself, Andrew O as chairman, vice chairman, Scott Anderson, secretary is Mr. Peter Brace. This is uh, seconded by Mr. Franzuto. Um, uh, I can't say enough that, uh, you know, I'm humbled by my fellow board members. Um, I really enjoy serving with all of you and, uh, and I truly appreciate your trust in me to, uh, to run the meeting. Uh, this will probably be year six. So thank you guys. And, and uh, I have to say sometimes even still after six years, the afternoon before the meeting, I get a few butterflies, but uh, uh, I guess that's just me, part of me. So, uh, but I do enjoy being here and serving and I appreciate serving with all of you and I appreciate all of you as well. So uh, we'll vote on the motion made by Mr. Bossy, seconded by uh, Mr. Fransudo to keep all officers remaining uh, as current. All in favor? Uh, Mr. Brace? Aye. Mr. Anderson? Aye. Mr. Bossy? Aye. Ms. Andrews? Aye. Mr. Fransudo? Aye. The chair votes aye as well. And I, for, I forgot to get sworn in. Did you get sworn in, Dave? No. Good. <laughs> so, let's do it. Next time you're on island. Or you're here now, so. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll swing by there tomorrow. Me too. Okay, summer meeting schedule. We've already determined that the first Tuesday of July will be the 4th of July. Uh, the third Tuesday is July 18th. Uh, first of all, uh, would everybody, you know, is everybody in agreement to uh, go to one meeting July, one meeting August and uh, with the potential to add a meeting if we feel necessary, probably specifically more in August than in July, uh, seeing as the first Tuesday, the holiday. I think that's a fine plan. Agreed. Yes. So July 18th and then the first Tuesday of August, which would be, we know what that is. Uh, first Tuesday is the first. Is no, I'm sorry. No, the first Tuesday is the seventh. Okay. All right. So uh, I will harbor a motion from the board uh, to uh, make a motion to go to our summer schedule as July, uh, July's meeting being the 18th, August meeting being the first Tuesday, the seventh. So moved to the second. Motions made by Mr. Bossy, Bossy seconded by Mr. Anderson to uh, approve our summer schedule as one meeting a month in July, one meeting for August, with the option to have two meetings if necessary. All in favor, Mr. Bossy? Aye. Mr. Anderson? Aye. Mr. Braves? Aye. Mr. Franzuto? Aye. Ms. Andrews? Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Any questions from the public? I do have one final comment. I could. Mr. Bossy. Uh, we are not up for consideration for the select board meeting tomorrow. Our committee is not, I guess, because the one applicant was late. So I'm going to assume that that will be pushed off, but we should probably ask. It's usually, it's usually later in the month. I mean, do the appointments. It's no, they're doing appointments tomorrow. Okay. Uh, well, everybody but us, it looks like. Well, when Dave got appointed, it wasn't during the committee process. It's just we went to the select board and said we need. Well, they said they were going to, maybe, they're, maybe the one, they're starting to have to appoint. Yeah. And, and it's not on the agenda for tomorrow that I saw. So, okay. That's, 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 I'm hoping it just got 
It may have just got dropped. Yeah. It, it may have just got, you know, pigeonholed because they were scurrying to fill yeah. committee appointments and somebody saw appointment to a, to a board and they said, you missed the deadline. So anyway, we'll find out tomorrow. But yeah, something to follow up with. I'll reach out to Erica. Okay. Anything else the board would like to discuss? Recap of tonight's meeting. Anything you'd like to add to our next meeting's agenda? If not, I will uh, encourage a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Motion's made by Mr. Bray, seconded by Mr. Bossy. You can buy a hair there, Mr. Anderson. Uh, to adjourn tonight's meeting, all in favor, Mr. Brace. Aye. Mr. Bossy. Aye. Mr. Anderson. Aye. Mr. Franzuto. Aye. Uh, Ms. Ms. Andrews. Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Thanks, Tara. Thank you, Tara. Good night. Thank Good night. you. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.